easier to manage this way. So anyway, so for enemy move, we say for I equal to zero, I is less than the amount of enemies, right? So if this er, um, arrow level I. Now, as you notice that we have a very, we created a variable called level right here. And we have um, a parameter level. So it wants to know what you're talking about, which level you're talking about. So to talk about the level in your enemy.h, you put this, um, the arrow, to, and then it will active, access that level. And then when you use this regular level, it's talking about the parameter. So if the level you've put it in the place in the text file is equal to the actual level that we're on, then it does a whole bunch of stuff. So if increase is uh if it increases equal to two to true, then range counter it adds one to range it adds one to range counter every single time. And if increase is false, it subtracts from the actual range counter. So right here we have the um labs and whatever what is labs it's basically saying the long absolute value the absolute value it just means that even if it's positive or negative it will return the positive value so if range counter is negative um 20 then it will actually say that range counter is equal to 20 and if it's negative 200 it will say that range counter is 200 and this is very significant right so I'm saying it's the absolute value of range counter i is greater than or equal to the actual range that we specify, then do all this. So remember how we um, we increase range counter and whatnot. So say we increase range counter and range counter is equal to 200, then this is going to happen, right? And it's going to set increase to false. So now um, range counter is going to be subtracting by 1, and then... So then it's going to be from 200, 199, blah, 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 all the way to zero, right? And then it's going to go all the way to a negative 200. And then since uh, you, we use absolute value, it's actually going to say 200. So that means it's going to be actually equal to the range that we've set, right? So, and therefore, it only moves 200 spaces from the origin position. And if this is confusing to you, just replay it in your mind. It, it will make sense to you eventually. Basically, all this does, it, um, you'll understand it when I show you the rest of the code. So, if the um, basically, if it's hit the, its range, right, then if the direction was 1, we switch the direction to 2. So, if it was moving right, then we switch it to left. If direction was two, if it was moving left, we just change it to moving right. If you're moving up, then we change it to moving down. If you're moving down, we change it to moving up. And I'm not going to be implementing gravity with um, the enemy. You already know what to do with the player class, so it'll be pretty straightforward with the enemy class. Same concept. And then I say if increase i, if it was if increase i was equal to true, then we reset the false. And if it was equal to false, then we set it to true. Easy enough. And then right now, right here, it's just the basics. If direction is equal to one, so if you're supposed to be moving right, then x plus equals the speed i. And x minus equal speed if you're moving left, and if you're moving up, then y minus equal speed. If you're moving down, y plus equal speed. So basically, this is all you need to remember right now. Is that okay? Say our range is equal to ten. I'm going to try and explain this better. So if range is equal to ten, when it loops ten times, it's going to be range counters equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Once it reaches ten. So say increase was equal to true. So once it equals 10, it's going to set increase equal to false, right? So it's going to be like um, 10, it's going to be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, and negative 10. But since we have the absolute value here, it's actually going to present 10. And since 10 is equal to our range, Right? Uh, why I put greater than or equal to? If it's um, it should be equal to. So if range counter is equal to a range, right? Uh, then basically negative ten is gonna be equal to a range because the absolute value of negative ten is actually ten. 
So that means this statement is going to be true. Then when it does all that, then it's going to be at negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, all the way back to positive 10 again. It's going to keep on looping back and forth. So that means you move 10 spaces from your origin position. Because in turn, from negative 10 to positive 10 is actually 20. It's 20 spaces. So it will take 10 spaces to go back to your origin position and the next 10 spaces to get to your new position and so on and so forth. Hope that made more sense to you. And if you put greater than or equal to, it will still work because um, if I put greater than, say for some reason range counter, it was equal to negative 11 for some reason, right? Then it's still, it's going to be equal to 11 because of the absolute value and then it's whatever the statement is going to be true. So you can put greater than or equal to or equal to, doesn't really matter. You can put greater than or equal to in case you want room for error, but there shouldn't be an error. So that's it for a move function. Hope you understood that. If you don't, comment below. Now, in our update function, all we have to put is just enemy move. Um, just put the level in there. And for a draw, there's one extra step. So we're going to put, for if i is less than equal to enemies, keep on looping. Now we're just going to say if this level, like we did below, is equal to the actual level, then we want to draw the sprite. If it's not the if it's not the same level, then we don't want to draw the sprite, right? If it's not the right level, we don't want to draw the enemy. My bad. So that's it. That's basically it. And you don't really need this rand function here. You can set all the increase to true if you want. Doesn't matter if it increases is equal to false or equal to true. It's still gonna do the same thing. So it doesn't matter. I just did this to implement the randomness and stuff because most games have random functions and stuff in there. So yeah. Let's go to our main.cpp now. Uh, so, what you need to include is include the C time library and include enemy.h. Now, why do we need C time? Because we need to um, set the seed time um, so then what our random function is actually activating, right? it actually does a random number right because if you don't have this then it, uh, it follows a significant pattern and doesn't become random anymore so with that it's actually random so and our enemy dot update we just put map dot get level and our enemy dot draw we just draw to the buffer and we put map dot get level and that's our get level function from our last tutorial and all you have to do is run this program and let's see what we got don't ever took this out yet moves 200 spaces to the left 200 spaces to right 200 spaces to the left now i realized i forgot to show you my text file so let's go to enemy.cpp so first we learn the x and the y and then speed and direction okay so it's my x um position 200, my y position 550. Um, the speed is equal to one, and the direction is equal to one, meaning it moves right at first. And then what else do we get? The range, the level, the width, and the height. Oh, sorry. So the range is 200, so it moves 200 spaces from its origin position. Um, the level is zero, meaning it's level one. The width is equal to 20, that, and the height is equal to 10. So, um, it's a wider sprite. So, if I want to be um, a longer sprite, I could put 40 there. And let's, oh, because look at uh, my draw function, sorry. Um, in our draw function, we put x i plus width i and y i plus height i. So depending on the width and the height that you determine your text file will determine the shape of your actual enemy. And you can make a bigger square or bigger something else for a boss and stuff like that, right? So see, we have a longer sprite. So there's no enemy collision or anything now, but as you can see, we have created our enemy with movement. So you can use this to create a multiple enemies. And the next tutorial is going to be teaching you how to create collision with your player and your enemy. 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Um, and bye.